Richard, when you think about inequality, inequality in the UK, and it's a hot topic, and you think about, as you'd like the banking sector to be uh, decentralised, flatter structure, more resilient, how do you begin to uh, talk to the public or the political class about achieving those goals? Essentially, you know, if, if, if um, we want to produce something, we need funding. So there's a role for banks in almost everything that's happening in the economy. But what exactly is that role? I just Quickly, I'd like to reflect on that. Banks are being thought of as intermediaries, but this are is they? not really what's happening. Banks... What, what are they, then? They're creators of the money supply. So you're firmly of the view that banks create money out of thin air? Yes, well, I, I produced the first empirical studies to prove that um, in the 5,000-year history of banking. Banks are thought of as uh, deposit-taking institutions that lend money. The legal reality is banks don't take deposits and banks don't lend money. So what is a deposit? A deposit is not actually a deposit. It's not a bailment. It's not held in custody. Uh, at law, the word deposit is meaningless. The law courts and various judgments have made it very clear if you give your money to a bank, even though it's called a deposit, this money is simply a loan to the bank. That's true. Yeah. So there is no such thing as a deposit. So There's you think it's poorly and it's adequately named then? So mm. banks borrow from the public. Okay, so that much we've established. What about lending? Surely they're lending money. Um, no, they don't. Banks don't lend money. Banks, again, at law, it's very clear, they're in the business of purchasing securities. That's it. So you say, okay, don't you know, confuse me with all that legalese. No. I want a I, loan. I want a loan. Yeah. Fine. Here's the loan contract. Here's the offer letter. And you sign. At law, it's very clear, you have issued a security, namely a promissory note. And the bank is going to purchase that. That's what's happening at Put law. it in layman's terms. What does that mean? It means that um, what the bank is doing is very different from what it presents to the public that it's doing. How does this fit together? So you say, fine, the bank purchases my promissory note, but how do I get my money? I want, you know, it's a I loan. Want I want my 200 money. grand, right? And I don't care about the details, I want the money. The bank will say, well, you'll find it in your account with us. That would be technically correct. If they say, we'll transfer it to your account, that's wrong, because no money is transferred at all. It's already From in the bank. anywhere inside the bank or outside the bank. Why? Because what we call a deposit is simply the bank's record of its debt to the public. Now, it also owes you money, and its record of the money it owes you is what you think you're getting as money. And that's all it is. And that is how the banks create the money supply. The money supply consists to 97% of bank deposits. And these are created out of nothing by banks when they lend because they invent fictitious customer deposits. Why? They simply restate, slightly incorrectly in accounting terms, what is an account's payable liability arising from the loan contract having purchased your promissory note as a customer deposit, but nobody has deposited any money. I wonder how the FCA deals with this, because in the financial sector you're supposed to not mislead your customers. <laughs>